Finland Saga Season 2, Episode 10. Kings and Swords. Is this going to be another Canute episode? Yes. Canute is... It's really amazing to think about Canute, Canute in the beginning of the series. Where to now? I feel like fighting the king, though, is just a lose-lose scenario. He's fast! <laughs> what exactly is the training for? <laughs> but is Canute holding back? That's the art of it. Lose to the king without making him think you took a dive. That's what I'm saying. You used to just hate everything. You used to hate life. He said a big couple of years. I don't know about that. I mean, if the last couple episodes are anything to go on, Knut has sort of mastered the art of defeating your enemy without energy. I mean, he's obviously good at sleight of hand and feints and surprise attacks. He's obviously very tactical. Brute force is not his thing, but he's not weak. Being perceived as weak could be a huge advantage if you actually have underlying strength. Here come the mind games. And that was the moment that this skilled swordman was, was dead. Died. He looks. Whoops! What was I just saying? <laughs> Who's weak now? What were you saying about sheer force? <laughs> but they get applause nonetheless. He just gets a round of applause for the one out of five victory. And everyone clapped at the end for the king. I saw it. You gotta know your enemy. What a surprise. Gunnar loves it. Gunnar, for some reason, never has a bad word for people in power. And here we go, and here we go. Here's the connection. Oh no. All that stands between Kettle and Chanute is snake, because the rest of those guys aren't doing anything. It's okay, squeeze the peasants. Yeah, I don't, I don't think taxation really feels like Canute's route. And that makes him vulnerable. Poison! <laughs> poison for all. Just poison everyone. Poison the peasants. What have peasants done for us lately? Or you could just, you know, conquer new lands. How about Sweden? <laughs> Finland? There it is. And that, doesn't that just kick the can down the road because then you need more troops to protect the new, newly stationed thing? No, that's, that's the opposite direction of growing the army, which is what we, we our goal. It's the crown speaking again. A surprisingly uncharacteristically bold suggestion from Gunner. If even Gunner is concerned enough to speak up about the, the dangers here, you know something's gone horribly wrong. It's in pretty deep. I was wondering how their stories were going to in intersect, but pretty clear path now. He's not coming for Kettle's farm only. He's coming for Thorfinn and Aner's farm and their ticket to salvation. And isn't Kettle on his way here? Is this might be a flashback. Maybe this is why he was summoned. You knew it would go horribly wrong. The second Kettle said, you're free. As soon as I get back. Thorfinn and Aner were free, and then Canute ruined everything. But I guess also probably launching them on a new journey. And like a destined clash of old... They're not, they weren't friends or enemies. Fellow travelers. Yeah, 
Brace yourself, Kettle. That feeling when you pay Canute a tribute to steal your farmland. How does Thorgil take this? Well, he would side with Canute anyway. Lower your hopes and expectations. Yeah, but he's never going to grow up. He's not allowed to walk through town by himself. Wow, wow he's exactly right. Omar's kind of used to being a big man around campus, but it's a long way from home. Omar was, in fact, not ready. No, can he actually get it out of his sheath this time? No. Oh, he, we, whoa! Is this character growth? He managed to get the sword out of the sheath for once. This just reeks of weakness, though. This just feels like a scared man looking to impose his weight, since he knows and fears that he has none. If anyone else shows up with a sword right now. His father was right to worry. <laughs> Omar is so weak, he's the one thing Kettle is not afraid of. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Is it? It's not. Speaking of threads coming together and connections. Whoa. I think I just asked last episode where he is. I know who you are, Leif Erikson. It's all starting to come together. Maybe found while looking for Thorfinn. <laughs> Got it. So he ended up adopting that guy. While looking for the real Thorfinn. At least, like, definitely not my Thorfinn. Think we have a lead. You're not gonna believe this. New Thorfinn, you're out. Found what I'm looking for. Hard not to. I would love to hear Leaf talk about it. It's amazing that he has this level of dedication, that he feels this level of responsibility for him. All these years later, most people would have just given up. Speaking of really amazing recollections from the show, I'm just remembering Leaf telling Thorfinn this story, telling him about his adventures in, I think, episode one. So just having that thought, maybe go back and watch that first Thorfinn, Leaf Erikson scene again. It's so crazy to watch now. Firstly, the episode's title is Somewhere Not Here, and boy, did we manage that. Mission accomplished, I guess. We are not in Iceland anymore, nor are we in Vinland. That's another interesting part about it, is that my interpretation of it then, probably Thorfinn's interpretation of it, was that Leaf's story was about finding paradise. We're still looking for it, but it's just way more. The journey is way more than Thorfinn ever could have anticipated or bargained for. But it's still out there, and I think it's becoming increasingly clear that it's not a place. It's something you get for crossing the, the sea with the Jormungard or whatever, the dragon, which in this case is just the hellish elements of humanity that Thorfinn has experienced and witnessed and participated in. Also notable is from that first episode, we're already questioning what it means to be a warrior. Leaf's interpretation of a warrior is based on a story of getting along with the natives and diplomacy, whereas the kids reject it because they are tied up in the narrative that Thorfinn is struggling to escape from that Ghost Asklad warned him about of warrior as someone who dies fighting. But that's the thing, right? You can travel the same land and understand it differently each time. Thorfinn is definitely more ready for who and what Leap is than he ever has been. Leap's still adventuring. 
This adventure has some real emotional, spiritual stakes. Fairweather sons. Me and my friend were just looking at this adventure package thing where you construct a boat, like this super old school boat made out of a log, and you sail it from one part of this set of tropical islands to another. And we were discussing that it looked really exciting, but what it was lacking was an endpoint. And that led us to talking about the nature of what makes a good adventure. And we narrowed it down to more or less three elements, which are difficulty, danger, and endpoint, reward. Really grand adventures seem to have all three things, though you can substitute danger for unknown. Because if you just don't know what to expect, that contains some of the same feelings. That is sort of what a lot of travel misses. The travel is not necessarily an adventure. Or instead of being absolute about it, you could see it as kind of a sliding scale. And that would be on the easier end. Thinking about it that way, it's kind of cool to chart adventure that way because you think about what is something that would be an amazing endpoint that would be difficult that opens up a whole range of possibilities for what adventure could be one of my favorite adventures from recent memory was in the philippines i had gone with my then girlfriend and we really wanted to go do this like whale whale shark something with the whale shark excursion thing but the place we were on the island was sort of far and we had a flight booked the next day so we just had given up on it but then seren serendipitously i guess we had a big argument and i suddenly found myself with the evening free and so even though i was told not to do this i took the what do you call it the motorbike thing and I just started driving through the countryside in the direction of this town, thinking I could spend the night there, get up early in the morning, do the whale shark thing, and then make it back for my flight. Just driving through that countryside into what was unknown for me was one of the most exhilarating travel experiences of my entire life. What made it even cooler was that arriving in the town, it just happened to be like a night where all the residents of that small town got together for a beach party with live music. And so they graciously allowed me to join and were just super cool and nice. And luckily it turned out they actually worked at the the whale shark event thing so to help me make my flight in the morning they put me on the very first boat out at like 5 a.m and then i just gunned it back to where my girlfriend was waiting unaware and we reconciled and then made our flight so i had it all i had like the the thrill the difficulty was the time limit and the end point which i thought was the whale shark thing which was pretty cool but really it turned out to be just the experience with all the people i met with all that said leaf has sort of the ultimate goal the ultimate end point in saving thorfinn's soul <laughs> Lower your hopes and dreams. Because we have the best slaves. But I'm very curious to see what how Thorgo reacts to whatever happens. It feels like his relationship with his father is too shaky for him to not side with Canute. Olmar might just mouth off. This could be the end for Olmar. Stop smiling. <laughs> I also accept your farm. Waiting for the other shoe to drop here. <laughs> <laughs> Even Thorkel. Stop, you're embarrassing me. That's not going to help their case. Can he get lucky and get it out of his sheet the second time? その豚は今日の兵どもの夕食だ。人体とみなし切ってみせよ。あ、はい。そんじゃ一発。And he meant that literally. <laughs> kind of looking like his whole future rests on this event, which it might. Can you not even cut a cooked pig? オルマルと申したな。その他の重視団入りに関しては重視長と協議し、あつつ立つ。オッケー。イエリング上下に投入しておれ。Lower <laughs> okay. your hopes and dreams. Oh, I was painful. It hurt. Painful for everyone. I feel bad for Thorgal, actually. まったく。気の小さいやつほど、ここ一番で何するか分かったもんじゃねえな。いや。戦場では真っ先にああいうものが知ります。部下には欲しくありませんな。
Canute is approaching every problem from a 3D angle. As just a pawn. Touching his scar. Yeah. Not a huge shock. Look at that, Omar. You, you've you increased your role. You did it. You're important now. I mean, it's not totally his fault. He's an idiot, but Kettle's farm was done. <laughs> Kettle's farm was going to be Canute's one way or the other. Canute is a very, very Machiavellian leader. He's, a, he's an ace at it. You never know from face glance if you're meeting him as someone like Kettle. What he's working on, what he thinks, and what he's gonna do. He has no tells, he doesn't reveal anything. He's very, very calculating, very patient, very calm, very self-assured, and that makes him so dangerous. So another episode about Thorfinn and Aner, but it feels so critical for the plot, because just so many things are coming together. It's not just what seems like a faded meeting between Canute and Thorfinn, but Leif joining the fray. 